Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's screencast, we are going to build the Linux kernel on board the Jetson TX2 development kit. Let's get started. We are building the kernel for the L4T 28.2 release. I have just finished flashing L4T 28.2 using Jetpack 3.2. On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named Build a Jetson TX2 Kernel. We are going to clone that repository. Let's grab the address. Now let's switch over to that repository directory. Let's turn on all the CPU cores. sudo nvp model minus m0. The first thing that we're going to do is get the kernel sources. There's a convenient script to do that. After loading up some dependencies and downloading the kernel sources, we're ready to configure the kernel. Let's set up our little tool here. The first step is to set the local version. Let's look that up for the stock kernel. Open up a new terminal uname minus r 4.4.38 is the release version and the minus tegra is the local version and it includes the dash if you want to compile a module for a stock kernel you would just add minus tegra as your local version In this case, I want to create a different kernel. I want to name it minus Jetsonbot version 0.1. We can see our new kernel release is minus Jetsonbot. And we can see that up here in our new kernel release. I also want to build a module. Let's find it. Here it is. It's a serial to USB converter, commonly used by Arduinos. I will compile that as a module. The little circle here indicates that it will be built as an external module. If I was to set it as a check mark, that would indicate that it would be built internally into the kernel. In this case, I want an external module. Close this up. Here it is. We're going to save our configuration. And let's quit. Close this baby up. At this point, we're ready to make the kernel. Let's take a look at the script. The script is in the scripts area. Make kernel. The make process is pretty simple. We basically switch over to the kernel directory where the source files are. We prepare the kernel to be built. We prepare the modules to be built. If we leave off this image parameter, then it will also build the DTS files. But in our case, we just built the image. Then we are going to make the modules and we will install the modules. Note that we do not copy over the image to the boot directory yet. So let's give that a go. This takes a while. Now 
That went swimmingly well. Now we are ready to copy over the kernel image to the boot directory. Let's take a look at our files here. So we see in our boot directory the stock image. Inside of this folder, the ext linux folder, we have our configuration. So let's take a look at that. So this basically tells us where the image is stored, so slash boot slash image in this case. We can use this file to set up multiple configurations if we wanted. So we could have a stock image and then we could have a JetsonBot image on here. But in our case, I think we'll just copy over the image and overwrite the stock one. A brave move, but we're going to do it anyway. So let's copy over the image. Now we're going to reboot. Keep our fingers crossed. Here we go. We've cheated death one more time. Let's open up a terminal here. You name minus R. Jetson bot. So that's a good sign. Let's go over to our source directory. Here are the compressed source files that we downloaded from NVIDIA. This is where we expanded them. This is the kernel source and this is a hardware source tree. The kernel source tree contains all of the source files and the object files as they were compiled. If you want to free up some space, you can delete these folders. Usually what I do is make a backup of them first, so I don't have to download them and build them again. So that should give you a good idea on how to build a kernel. Thanks for watching.